Thank you, Sue, and good morning, everyone. We're here to uh, discuss Volition RX. Um, I'm Gael Forter, the Chief Commercial Officer. It's a pleasure to have you this morning. So uh, first of all, who we are? We are Volition, an epigenetic company focusing on epigenetic markers. Epigenetic means on top of the genome. We have two core use cases, if you will, on the human and the animal space. Currently, it is on screening as well as monitoring for disease progression and treatment response. We believe our addressable market is very significant in the billions. And in the short term, commercially, we have two key product area that you know, are either on the market or about to come on the market. The first one is the vet cancer screening and monitoring test that you'll see, as well as then upcoming netosis. And on the human side, we have our netosis program and assay coming. We just started to monetize our IP uh, with major agreements uh, that we'll discuss further with both the Hesca Corporation and IDEX. What set us apart today? We have, as I mentioned, a large IP portfolio, 128 patents pending, more than 90 already granted. Uh, we're working on, on a lot of breakthrough technology. Uh, it's a growing patent portfolio. Uh, and that allows us to offer our current test in a simple, low-cost, accessible format. And we think this is a core competitive advantage. So we are Volition, the company, the brand, but we also have now a commercial brand. We have NuQ for nucleosome quantification. So in terms of product pillars, internally, we are working on the application of this technology to the vet space, to the netosis space, that's NuQ net, cancer oncology, capture and discover. So commercially, our two key focus area currently are NuQ vet and NuQ net. I'll continue on EQNet in a little while, but for now, I want to hand it over to Heather and Tom. We'll update you on the VET opportunity. Hi, my name's Heather Wilson Robles. I'm a medical oncologist by trade, and I'm the chief medical officer for Volition Veterinary. And today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the science behind our technology, as well as its clinical uses and our ability to detect it uh, with a variety of important diseases. Nucleosomes are the, really the basic building blocks of our chromosomes. And so really the way nucleosomes work is you have eight histone proteins and they sort of make up a core, really a spool, which round the thread of your DNA is wrapped. Those get further condensed and actually make up the scaffolding, which is what builds the DNA around your chromosomes. And what happens is during cell death or during necrosis or even during inflammation, when you have a lot of a neutrophilic action, is those nucleosomes get released out of the nucleus of the cell and into the blood, into the plasma. And really that's what we're detecting. So we are looking for the amount of nucleosomes that are sitting in the plasma at any given time. We all have some because our cells are constantly turning over in our bodies, except it's usually a very, very low amount. However, in certain states like cancer or sepsis or, or severe inflammation, we find that the body's ability to get rid of those things is hampered. We've sort of maxed out above that, almost like a sink getting too full. And so what ends up happening is those nucleosomes rise in your blood. And when they do that, our test, a very simple ELISA test, is able to detect and quantify the number of nucleosomes floating in the blood. And we have found that to be an important detection tool for both cancer and inflammation. Lymphoma is the most common cancer that we diagnose in pet dogs. It represents anywhere between about 20 to 25 percent of the cancers that we see. There are quite a few different types of lymphoma, but really the most important types are B cell and T cell lymphomas. Uh, B cell lymphomas represent about 70 percent of the lymphomas that we see, and our test was able to detect 95 percent of those in one study that we published. T cell lymphomas make up, again, about the other sort of third, and we were able to detect over half of those in the study that we did. Lymphoma is not a curable disease in dogs, however, it is one of the most treatable diseases that we use. 85% of our dogs will go into remission when treated with chemotherapy, and our ability to monitor that may actually be an important key use for NUQ in the future. Hemangiosarcoma is also another very common cancer in dogs. Actually, together with lymphoma, they make up over one-third of the cancers that we see. This tumor frequently affects the spleen and often arises silently with no clinical signs until the time where dogs actually have a bleeding event putting them in shock and actually requiring an emergency vet visit. 
Our test has the ability to detect hemangiosarcoma even at the very early stages before a bleeding event happens. We're able to detect 82% of hemangiosarcomas in dogs, over 60% of those dogs with early stage disease. Cancers like lymphoma and hemangio are systemic cancers. This is where our test performs the best. Other systemic cancers like histiocytic sarcoma, we're able to pick up over half of those. Metastatic carcinomas and things like that have all been tumor types that we are successfully able to detect with this test. Adding the new Q test to a wellness or a prevention plan for our pet dogs starting really at middle age, so probably seven, eight, nine years old for these guys, as well as earlier in those dogs who are at risk, dogs like golden retrievers, Rottweilers, Boxers, Bernese Mountain Dogs, really probably starting to test those guys around four years of age as part of their wellness test plan makes really good sense. Welcome everyone to our webinar today. I'm Dr. Tom Butera, the CEO of Volition Veterinary, and I wanted to just let everyone know that our mission continues to be and will always continue to be to save lives on the pets as well as the humans that we interact with on a daily, monthly, and annual basis. I wanted to give you a little bit of information about the tremendous opportunity we have in the veterinary space to introduce our new Q vet cancer screening tests to our veterinary colleagues on a worldwide basis. Just to give you a consolidated view just on the United States alone, we have 84 million dogs. Of those 84 million dogs, we have more than 6 million of them develop cancer on an annual basis. One out of every four dogs develops cancer. 50% of dogs over the age of 10 develop cancer and die of cancer. Of the 84 million dogs that I mentioned to you, over 50% of them are dogs that are over seven years of age. Our test initially addresses all dogs over the age of seven years of age should be tested. That's close to a 42 million dog population that potentially could be an opportunity for us to screen on an annual basis. In addition to that, we have a recommendation is there is a host of breeds that are also predisposed to cancer. And we are recommending that they be tested as early as three to four years of age. So I think you can get a little bit of a taste of what the tremendous opportunity is for our test just on a screening basis alone in the United States. I know I gave you a lot of numbers, but those numbers are really the introduction to what I want to speak to now. How are we going to address this commercial opportunity? First of all, we want to have worldwide distribution of our test accessible to every veterinary community in every country in every part of this globe. That's not something that Volition Veterinary and Volition itself has the capabilities of doing by ourselves. We have to have significant reliance on major corporate players in the space around the world. Our goal, in particular at Volition Veterinary, and I'm sure it's also the case with Volition, is to continue to produce phenomenal products from an R&D perspective to provide the scientific basis for those and also to bring them to commercialization as quickly as we can to, in order to allow the partnerships and the distribution channels that we are building with major corporate players around the world and have them provide the access to the veterinary communities on a worldwide basis. So now let me give you some specifics on some of the major deals and partnerships that we have developed in 2022. The first major partner that we signed a $28 million deal with is the Hesca Corporation. That was an exclusive arrangement for point of care testing. And if anybody wants to know what point of care testing is, that means it's an in-house piece of equipment that specifically goes in the veterinary hospital where the veterinarians and the veterinary technicians can access that blood work from the pet in the hospital and provide an answer within 10 to 15 minutes to that client. In addition, with Hesker, we also have a non-exclusive arrangement with them to source their contacts both in the United States as well as in Europe and in other parts of the world where they have contacts with other reference labs. The other most recent announcement that we have, which we are absolutely excited about as well as the Hesca, is we just signed an agreement with the IDEX Corporation, which is a worldwide distributor. 
in reference labs to veterinarians around the world. To give you a little bit of an idea of how large this company is, we are talking about 80 reference labs around the world servicing 50,000 veterinary hospitals. Being able to access through IDEX reference labs, which is a non-exclusive arrangement, the opportunity is immense and the contacts and the exposure that we will have with our test is uh, something that we have been working on for an extended period of time and we just announced it at the VMX Orlando conference in January 2023. So where are we now? We're launched in the IDEX reference lab. We are launched at HESCA. We're launched at the Texas GI lab. Skill, which is that other portion that HESCA has a significant footprint in Europe with, as well as DNA Tech in Portugal, which is the largest veterinary reference lab in Portugal. Coming up, as I mentioned earlier, we have an exclusive agreement with HESCA on the point of care unit in veterinary hospitals. That point of care unit should be available for launch and distribution sometime in the first half of 2023. The other claim that's coming out soon is the monitoring claim. That is a paper that is currently being reviewed by our peers, and that specifically identifies the use of our test for monitoring disease progression in animals and in remission. So it's a highly useful test where the veterinarians that treat animals for cancer can monitor how they are progressing, how they are responding to treatments, and then when they are into remission. And in addition to that, when they go back to the general practitioner, they can use our test for monitoring how long that animal stays in remission and when potentially it may return. Let's look into the future a little bit about all the exciting things that Volition Veterinary is currently working on over the course of the next 12 to 24 months. We are currently doing a lot of pre-analytic work in cats to substantiate our new Q platform in cats for cancer and then eventually for non-cancer aspects. We're also working on introducing netosis to the companion animal side. We have hired over the last six months a veterinary criticalist at Texas A&M University, uh, Dr. Justin Hines, who actually is leading our netosis uh, educational pursuits and clinical trials in the U.S. and is also working with collaborations in Europe as well on this important topic. I know Gail has spoken to it already, so stay tuned. We are also investigating this year the use of our new Q platform in horses, especially elite equestrian horses for performance. And also another significant opportunity for us is production animals, where we are looking specifically at particular diseases where our new Q platform could potentially really enhance at a low cost basis, identifying specific diseases that are very prevalent in production animals. And we're working on that as well in terms of pre-analytics in 2023. I'll end with, we have a significant number of collaborations that we have developed both in the US academic institutions in the U.S., as well as collaborations with uh, universities in Europe, in several different countries, which are extremely interested in the products that we are bringing to market. And we couldn't be more excited about the scientific support that we are getting from communities both in the U.S. as well as in Europe. With that all said, uh, thank you again for joining us today, and I'm going to pass it back over to Gail. Thank you, Tom. A lot of excitement on the vet side and a great start of the year. So now, quickly on Netosis, and um, if there are a lot of questions or interests, we are, we're happy to run a dedicated webinar. But why, why is it an interest for Volition? So Netosis, it's a unique form of cell death characterized by the release of decondensed chromatin. So now you can see it is linked to what we already doing previously. We decided to focus initially on some big indications, sepsis, coagulation, thrombosis, as well as transplantation. And within those indications, restratification, treatment, and monitoring of remission. And it's already a very significant market opportunity. So the time for sepsis, again, is very sizable. Just to give you a couple numbers, in the US alone, 1.7 million adults every year have sepsis. It's present in a very large number of hospitalizations. And in terms of thrombosis, again, and because it's, it's monitoring, you know, we're talking about multiple tests at regular intervals. Quick update uh, on the netosis opportunity. So in May 2022, we got granted a first C mark. 
We also have our FDA program uh, that is progressing, no on the way. We started in Q4 to the work to support our uh, breakthrough device designation application, as well as a broader Netosys FDA application in the first part of 2023. We also have a clinical study signed in collaboration with MD Anderson on sepsis in cancer patients. So you can see a lot of synergies with the work we're doing, both on oncology as well as netosis. In terms of a commercial update, so we discuss the idea of centers of excellence, specific locations with other key uh, opinion leaders or you know, teams of a very high caliber running our tests and those centers of excellence, we're happy to, to announce that already two are fully operational and we're in discussion to add more. And, and you'll see uh, this number growing significantly, uh, both in Europe and as well as in the US. Um, we also have ongoing discussion for licensing and supply uh, agreements with major actors of both the coagulation space as well as the, the sepsis uh, market. So now quickly, in summary, I want to make sure you leave with a couple key points. So first, we are a diagnostic company focusing on epigenetic, which is an exciting area uh, where a lot of large players now are, are drawn to. Um, we have both a human and veterinary uh, applications, and our initial focus is on screening and monitoring for uh, what we think are life-altering disease. We believe our addressable markets just on those first two uh, key areas is very significant in the billions. We can be a big company just succeeding on those two, two points. But we work on more, but those two will, will make us a, potentially a, a significant company. Those are the two areas that we will focus initially commercially for, I would say, the forcing future, 22, 23, possibly even 24. Um, and we have a, a, a number of updates uh, that hopefully will, uh, will interest our shareholders uh, over the next uh, month and, and quarters. And finally, we just started to monetize this IP. And this is what I mentioned, where like, those are the two first key areas of interest for us, but there's a lot more. We're happy to now answer any questions you may have. Back to you, Sue.